Hey everybody, welcome to today's Bacon and Coffee. So to get us started, I'm gonna do the 30 second countdown. All right, and it would not be complete without our theme music. Here we go. All right, welcome everybody. And today I'm gonna to be doing a solo presentation. Don't have a guest, but um, that's okay because today I wanna to talk about being in business for 20 years as my dog barks at somebody outside. So, you know, that's one of the beauties of being alive. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you're all having a fantastic morning. What I want you to do is go ahead and if you're here, put something in the chat. Uh, let me know if you are here and you have any questions or comments as we go along. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about the fact that I've been in business for 20 years and I'm going to share with you some of my favorite things, some of the software that I use and I've learned over the last eh, probably, you know, year to six months that I've been using and some of it I've been using longer, but uh, just want to give you some, you know, some tips on some stuff that you could do uh, for your business. And hey, Jeff, thanks for showing up. And if anybody has any questions throughout this, let me know. I will answer them as I go along. But let me start off with this. And um, so it was about 20 years ago that I ended up uh, working at a place called Telemedia. And that was at Arthur Anderson. And it was a cool place. I mean, you know, we had a ton of people working there, TV studios, broadcast. We were doing broadcast TV over the internet back in 2001. And unfortunately, I did not play very well in that corporate sandbox. And so uh, it was um, quite an interesting time. I'm going to see if I can move this so I can do a little bit of uh, stuff here. There we go. Nope, that's not going to work for me because uh, that's going to show the other slide. But anyway, so after uh, I ended up losing that job and started, thank you, Tammy. Um, and I started um, basically a life journey of starting this business. So at the same time, uh, I was about to get married. This is my 20 year anniversary of my marriage to Kim. But at the same time, we we're building this house that I'm living in. And so you can kind of see some of the construction shots there. And when I was doing that, um, you know, after the house was built, I started B2B interactive marketing. And that is Mimi, the cat sitting on my desk. And you could see, you know, how low tech it was. Then I had one of those Apple iMacs, one of the blueberry ones had a second screen for my laptop um, and way back yonder in the 80s. And uh, even before that, I was doing, you know, audio recording, video production and stuff like that. So that was kind of the uh, germination of this business. And uh, it's been a wild ride. So back in 2001, when I started this business, think about it, there was literally the internet was really just getting started. There was no social media. There was no Facebook, no LinkedIn, no Twitter, no live video, none of this stuff. And there were no cell phones. I mean, there were cell phones, but not smartphones like we have them today. And everything's really changed quite a bit. And so, you know, in those 20 years, I've had to learn and adapt and grow to different technological changes and different things that have happened. And, you know, obviously when Facebook came along and LinkedIn came along, it kind of changed the scope of how we do what we do, how we communicate, how we market um, the the online video craze right now. Could you imagine your life without Zoom? <laughs> that was not around way back when we started. When I started this business, I was doing business card CDs. I was literally burning them on a CD burner and selling them. And they usually had little videos for businesses. And uh, that's pretty much what it was at the time. And so that was my business way back yonder. And so now I'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff and I'm gonna pull up a couple of different websites for you guys to show you. So I'm gonna go to one here 
and let's go to perfect tail strategy. Okay. So let me go back here and share my screen and let's get to, I got to find where it's at because uh, I got so many tabs open because I got a lot, a ton of stuff to show you guys. So let me click on this here and there we go. And so now I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to stop this share uh, and I'm going to start a new one. So you can kind of see my screen and this will help me to, um, let's see, there we go. Okay. So this may be a, a duplicate. So you're going to see, ooh, look at that. That's very psychedelic. Uh, let me turn off this brand. So we'll turn that off. There we go. And now you can see it's like, ooh, deep, 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 deep. But anyway, so what I wanted to show you was this one website that I started. It's called Perfect Sales Strategy. And it was kind of the journey of what's happened over the last handful of years, probably the last three to five years. And, um, you know, one of the things that I did is I, I started to work with a bunch of different products. And those products primarily were Evernote, Nimble, Crystal, and Active Campaign. And there's a few others that I'm going to show you. And, um, you know, the other thing I wanted to talk about too is in the course of that time, I started the Bacon Podcast. And so let me stop this here. Oops. And of course, I'm hearing this, but you're not hearing it. But uh, so what it is, let me go back to the homepage. Uh, I just finished episode 665 on the Bacon Podcast. And uh, I'm coming up on episode 666, which is kind of interesting because um, I have to do something kind of evil for that. I've, I've had other people tell me to treat it like the 13th floor uh, and don't <laughs> don't do it. But no, I think I'll I'll come up with something interesting for uh, for Monday. But you know, 666 episodes is um, a lot of podcasts, and so and I've done uh, just so you know too, I've done a ton of these LinkedIn lives. As a matter of fact, um, here's the case study that's going to come up here in a sec. But I want to get to LinkedIn lives. If you go to liforsales.com. Um, you could see that there's been 10 of these LinkedIn lives done so far, and there's one that's happening today, so that'll make it 11. But these are all the different past guests that I've had, and I've got some great guests coming up in the not too distant future. So you can check out all those by going to liforsales.com and just clicking on the LinkedIn lives, and uh, that will give you, you know, all that information. So let me go back here and get rid of that for a sec. So what I wanted to do today was talk about a handful of tools uh, and let me see if there are any more comments in here. Um, nope, nothing yet. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments, let me know. So um, I'm going to cover some of those tools on the perfect sales strategy, but I'm also going to cover a handful of other tools that I've just learned about. And um, so if you want to learn about those, I'm going to share my screen again here. And this, of course, will um, do that same thing. It's like, ooh, cool. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is a website that I have. It's called brianloves.info. <clears throat> and these are all products that I actually use in my business, and they change over time. Uh, I used to um, use Aweber and a couple other tools like 366. Uh, but this year I've started using Active Campaign for all of my marketing emails and all my client marketing emails, and it's been amazing. I mean, the open rates, everything about it has been great. But there's all kinds of tools in here. So for example, this is the hosting company I use. Acuity is the scheduling software that I use. I love that. Uh, it integrates with PayPal and a whole bunch of other things. Animoto for simple videos. Blinkist is one of the tools I'm going to be talking about today. Um, there's Aweber, which is another tool, which if you if Active Campaign is uh, a little over the top, because it is relatively expensive. You have to have a, a fairly decent sized agency, but it does some incredible stuff. Um, Aweber is my second choice, which is relatively inexpensive. Uh, Blueberry for podcasting. Crystal, which is just amazing. I'll show you guys a little bit of that. Nimble is what I use for my CRM. That is amazing unto itself. And as a matter of fact, later this week, I'll be uh, posting the interview with John Ferrara, who is the uh, originator, the owner and the, the mind behind Nimble. And um, he's an interesting dude. I love interviewing him. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Printful, you can do your own uh, custom t-shirts and things of that nature. You know, it's kind of like the bacon mugs um, that I get. Planable is the software that I use that is uh, for all my social media posting. It is amazing. Um, another one of those that I interviewed 
this um, the planable story is um, the person who started this is in Romania and he basically hit me up and said, I want to be on your podcast. And I said, dude, you need to follow me and comment on some of the stuff that I did because I didn't know him from Adam and I didn't know the software. Well, he did. He followed me and he, he was very engaging. And so I finally you know, broke down and interviewed him and I fell in love with this platform. I'll be showing you that. Uh, Pot is a uh, another interview that I did that um, if you want to get a, be a guest on podcast, this is a great place to find it. It's a, a free service. You can post your info. You can find guests for your podcast. Uh, Rev I use for um, transcriptions. Sonia is another one that I've tried that does AI. Um, I'm probably going to pull that out because I stopped using it. It was just a little too expensive for me. Textiful, if you want to do uh, adding people to your email list via text and Visme, which is really cool. I've stopped using it, but I might use it again because this is a um, it's a presentation and infographic software. And it's I, I really like it. Yeah, again, I just didn't have a business case to keep it going. The wish list member is something that I use. And WP Forms is huge in, in collecting form data. I use that for my biggest clients. And then, of course, Zoom. So those are all the things. So if you want to learn about any of these, you go to brianloves.info forward slash products. And then you can click on any one of these. And I'll go ahead and start with Blinkist. So if I click here to learn more, it will open up a new Blinkist tab. And I want to give you guys a, um, a tip before we get started on this. Next week, there is going to be a sale. And you can only get it through my link. Uh, it won't be on their main website. But you'll get 40% off a year. I believe it's $99. So it's going to cost you like $60 bucks a year, $59. Bucks. Um, it is so worth it. Um, and I'll explain what Blinkist does. I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And uh, I don't need that. That's okay. Okay, so let me jump back here real quick. I'm going to just um, double check. I want to make sure that I, since I'm solo, um, I have to look and see if there are any more comments. And there are no new comments. So I'll go ahead and share that again. And I'll kind of go through what Blinkist does. So let me get to that. And uh, so here it is. Okay, so what this is, is Blinkist is basically a audiobook software. Now it has audiobooks you can read or you can listen. And what they do is they take your favorite audiobooks and they put them in what are called blinks. They're like 15 minutes long. So you can get an entire book like the seven, you know, habits of highly effective people. Uh, I was just listening to something on stocks. Um, you know, how women rise. I mean, the amount of, of books on here is just amazing, but there's something cool about it. Just so you guys know, I have finished, I think, 130 plus books since the beginning of the year. And, um, you know, I can go look at my library up here. So um, these are the ones that I've currently read. And you can also... Um, if you so the concept here is this um you can go back to an audiobook that you listened to you know a year ago five years ago or a book that you've read five years ago and basically refresh your memory around it and so you know say you've listened to the four hour work week or the myth revisited or think and grow rich or how to f uh, win friends and influence people i mean any of the things that you can imagine i mean you can just basically go in and search and just do uh, Dale Carnegie, for example. Dale Carnegie, I believe it is. I could be wrong. Okay, so here we go. So here is all the books by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And he has the sales Bible, too. So you can, um, you can read it if you want to. You can listen to the audio. Uh, and if you like it, you can buy the book, too. And so what happens is when you finish this audiobook, it automatically takes you down a rabbit trail. So after you finish this one, it kind of plays another one that's similar and another one that's similar and another one that's similar. And one of the books that I got, and I got to go back to my B2B website and kind of look for this here. Bear with me one sec. Uh, so let's go to blogs. 
And there's one called Icky Guy that I wanted to show you guys. Here it is right here. Okay. So don't be an Icky Guy. So this is actually a concept um, that I found in one of the audiobooks. And somebody started talking about it. And then I found another audiobook on it. And what Icky Guy is basically a, a way for you to um, figure out, you know, what is your purpose in life? So what do you love? What are you really good at? What does the world need? And how do you get paid for it? And so you, you basically, if you can answer those four questions, you can find this center in your life that basically you can get up every single day and do what you love, things that you're really good at, what does the world need and, and get paid for it. And so that was all found by basically listening to an audiobook. And here I can just go in and type Icky Guy, A-K-I-G-A-I, -I. there we go. And there it is. So this is the book that I ended up listening to. And, but again, I think the power in this is number one, you get to reread books in 15 minute intervals. So like I said, I've gone to 130 plus books since the beginning of the year. And, you know, if I find a book that I've never listened to that really blows me away, then I can go buy it. I mean, I can buy the audiobook and it's 15 bucks. Now, I was paying $15 a month for Audible and I would listen to maybe a book a month because they're usually six to eight hours long. You know, so when I'm walking, you know, my dog who was barking a while ago, um, I would get one audiobook a month and I had like a whole bunch of them that were being stored up all the time. I wasn't utilizing it. This is, you know, basically less than 10 bucks a month. And I can listen to book after book after book after book. I mean, in a, in a given week, I'll probably listen to, you know, 10 to 12 books. And, and the thing about it is, is that it, it goes from book to book to book. It leads you down a path. And the coolest thing about it, there are books that I never would have even known existed. I never would have bought or listened to. And, and again, it takes you down tangents, you know, so when you start on this one, the next thing you know, you're going down, you know, Zen or mindset or, you know, just, just incredible amount of content that you can learn from. And that's, you know, one of the key things I want to get across is, you know, I mean, look where I came from a long time ago and how far I've had to come. And part of one of the things I attribute the success of sticking around for 20 years is continually be winning, willing to learn and find out new things and learn new concepts. I mean, obviously, you know, I had to learn about Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, those things. I had to learn how they work, what the, you know, how their advertising works, so on and so forth in order to, you know, make myself successful, make my customers successful. So having a tool like this that you can use to educate yourself and find new content that you probably don't even know exists is just so powerful. It is so cool. So I want to see if there's, I'm going to go back to me and see, do you guys have any questions at this point? Or um, have you guys ever been on Blinkist? If you haven't played with it, I suggest you wait till Tuesday the 20th and you and you can get 40% off. But the bottom line is you can go there and you can start today if you want to um, and you get seven free days. So then uh, it, on the 20th, if you decide you like it, you can get you know a great deal. So if you wanna download it today and start playing with it, it works on your phone, it works on your desktop. Heck, you can even play it on Alexa and things like that if you like listening that way. So that is my first tip today is using Blinkist, which is just you know amazing. It absolutely, I love that software. So the next tool that I want to talk about is Nimble. So yeah, again, if you go back to Brian Loves, let me go ahead and um, get back to my streaming and bear with me one sec. I'll turn it back on. Do, do, do. Ooh, cool. Okay. So Nimble, if you click through on Nimble, uh, what Nimble does, and there's John Ferrara, there's the guy who owns it. He's the uh, founder. And he invented uh, Goldmine a long time ago. It was one of the first CRMs, and this was before the internet, so everything was done, you know, basically via the software. And he sold that company, and then started Nimble. And the thing I love about Nimble is that it allows me to do a ton of different things that um, are, I think are really important about business. And you know, he says, "Say hello to better relationship management." So if you listen to the interview with John this week, he talks about the history of the CRM. And the history of the CRM really started way, way back yonder when Microsoft decided to create Outlook. Outlook was originally email was its own separate program. 
And then Microsoft decided to integrate the calendar and the contact address book and the, the email into one system. And that was the beginning of the CRM. But the biggest challenge with that is, you know, if you're using Outlook or Office 365, it kind of sits in that system. And there's not an easy way, A, to get the information in. Uh, you have to, you know, it's not like you can just click a button and add things. Um, there are certain things that you can, certain things you can't. But the second thing about it is it really doesn't integrate and it doesn't let you see what's happening in, in the bigger picture. So if I log into my account, here, I'll go ahead and uh, get back there, wake it up, and go back to the home page. I mean, it has a lot of traditional CRM things, okay? So, like, here's my calendar, bacon and coffee, and there's instant club and yada, yada, yada. These are the people that I want to stay in touch with. This is tells me, you know, when I send an email, who's opened it and what they've done with it. There's contacts to highlight, so on and so forth. But the real power comes in two different things. Number one, it's tagging people. So one of the tips you may have heard me talk about is my 10, 10, 10, okay? So my 10, 10, 10 system is that you basically connect with 10 people and you basically pick 10 people, you spend 10 minutes, a minute per person, and you send them 10 words and the 10 words are, how are you doing and how can I help you? And that's pretty much it. And if you contact people on a regular basis, you're going to create conversations. Not everybody is going to be somebody that you wanna communicate with. But one of the things I was able to do was go here and basically identify 232 people that are important that I wanna stay in touch with. And so they're all tagged as that. And so this is people that are either, you know, their contacts, their family, their, you know, it's just about everything. So I've got all this information in here and I can go through and basically, you know, connect those people. So for example, if I wanted to email Bob Yeager, I can click on Bob and I could simply do an email message, okay, send an email, and then I can go over here and um, let me pull this email up, do it one more time, sorry about that, uh, send an email. And so I have a template and I could select my template as my 10, 10, 10, uh, and there it is. So I could touch base and go ahead and proceed and it changes it out and hey, Bob, it's been a while, just wanted to say hi, I hope everything's doing well, let me know if I can help you with anything, take care. And if I wanna add a signature to it at the bottom, I can, but it's just that simple. And then I could send and track it so I could see if Bob opened it up. And that's how simple it is to do via email. Now I can basically copy the same thing here, okay? And I could go to LinkedIn and I could look up Bob Yeager and I could do the same thing if that's his preferred method, okay? Um, I, a, or no, it's EA, sorry. Okay, so there's Bob Yeager. Um, that's not the same Bob Yeager, but if that was, I could simply message him here and I could basically cut and paste that. Um, different Bob Yeager, but you get the point. But here's here's the real key to this thing is it does a, um, so if I want to, I can easily, let me go find somebody. So a matter of fact, I use Tammy as an example because Tammy was on, she may still be, uh, Tammy Helfrick. Okay. So what I can do is here's Tammy. And I can select her text and I can go over here and there's a plugin in LinkedIn. So I could simply grab that and I can A, see if I have her information in here already. Okay, so I do. So I can actually go here and, and look at Tammy. And if I have a conversation with her, I can add a note. And if I wanna add her in somebody that I wanna stay in touch with, Mark is important. I simply click that and I can add a note and say, Tammy attended. Uh, helps to spend tend head bacon and coffee. Okay, so I can add that note in there. I can, you know, also tag her as uh, local, as an orchard. I can add tags to her. So, say I wanted to add, um, you know, a bacon podcast interview. I could do any of those kind of things. Add that down here, and so that you know, Tammy is now in. If I go back to um, my nimble here. Uh, if I go back to contacts and I look at Mark Important, she should be, um, well, it's going to be alphabetical. So if I go to, I have to go all the way down to six or eight to find Tammy because it's going to be T. Uh, let's go to eight. 
And there she is. So now she's been marked important. And if I need to uh, add a phone number or any of those kind of things, I can. But there's other things I could do too, is I have the ability to tag everybody that I want to. So I can look at um, you know people that have been coaching clients. So I could pull all those people up. I could pull up all the people from church if I want to. Um, no contacts have been found. Well, I don't have church, so I'm much. It must be the orchard. Let me do that. Uh, so I can go down here and orchard community. Here we go. Oops, and I have to undo the other one. You can't have two at one. That's one of the things that you can't do. So I was looking for a coaching client um, and orchard at the same time. So there's everybody that I have in the orchard community that, um, you know, I have their contact information in here. And so, you know, you can obviously, it makes it super, super easy to organize the data for people. And with LinkedIn, it makes it super simple if you meet somebody to be able to, um, you know, connect with them. So one of the things that I've discovered too, which I didn't have on today's docket, is something called Lunch Club. And I, I think Cammy is on it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if you haven't played around with Lunch Club, what Lunch Club does is you can select um, to have a random meeting with somebody all over the United States. It could be the world if you want. And you can pick and choose who you want to meet. So you can say, not, it, you're not picking the person, you're picking the um, what's interesting about them. So it could be like, for example, I have chosen founders. I want to meet people that have started up companies, and that way I get to have a conversation with them and ask them questions. I'm not doing it to sell them anything. I'm doing it to learn from them. So if I meet somebody from Lunch Club, uh, which I can go here and show you all the people that I've met from Lunch Club, I can just click on this, and I have to go and untag Orchard, and I can go to Lunch Club here, and these are all the people that I've met inside of Lunch Club. Uh, so let me just click over here, and let me go ahead and close that out. And so these are all people that I have met um, through just basically going online. And I met this really cool person, Janice, uh, the other day. And she's with a company called Next Tech AR Solutions. And so here's their website. And I learned about how to do virtual conferences with them. This is really super cool stuff. Now, one of my clients says to me, hey, Brian, I want you to find me what's cool in the world. That's one of their, you know, that is truly one of the things that they said to me, and that's an objective that they have. So I met with this person and, and learned more about their company and what they do, and I'm not gonna play all the different information, but the, the thing is, is that they do virtual conferences. So I, I said to my client, I said, I'm gonna learn more about this, but you know, what if we could have all of your vendors come in they could have virtual booths and you could do a virtual trade show for all of your clients. And then each one of the vendors could come in and actually give a presentation on one of their new products. And we could do this quarterly. So you'd have a, you know, they have probably about 20 different vendors. You know, if they got four vendors in there, they basically create four slots, but everybody, they could have 20 vendors if they want to have a booth come in and have a booth, but they could have four presentations, one every quarter, and they could talk about a new product. So it's an online, basically half day conference for their clients. And, you know, the cost of this is really reasonable. So it starts at about 200 bucks and you can pay by the month. So you can do one, one month for 200 bucks. Um, if you want their assistance, it's a little bit more expensive, but you know, it's way cheaper than trying to get booths and do it in a physical location. And so this is, and the other thing too, is what if the vendors actually provided some money to be engaged with that? You know, maybe the vendors could pay for the whole thing so it wouldn't cost the client anything and then they get to promote their products to their audience and do something that maybe some of their competition isn't. So you can kind of see how some of this stuff kind of engages and evolves. You know, it went from Blinkist to listening to new things to Nimble and Lunch Club interacting with each other. And so, I mean, these people that I've met in Lunch Club are just amazing. Um, this guy is a high level data person uh, who is uh, taught me a lot about sales in large companies like Yum Brands and, um, and uh, uh, some other big companies. This is a gentleman who's in the government in Australia and basically works at their um, United Nations. 
And uh, Rick Tashman was an incredible guy that I met out of um, Philadelphia. And so the, and Chuck Hester, I mean, this turned into a complete thing. Chuck has been on this LinkedIn Live and he invited me to be part of something called Pay It Forward Tuesday. And let me go to that real quick. I'll show you that. Uh, pay It Forward Tuesdays. There we go. And so now I'm engaged with this organization and this organization basically finds a person or a nonprofit, you know, once a month. And basically there's a bunch of gurus uh, that get together and give. So there's Chuck. I met him through that lunch club and there's Adam and there's Jennifer and Bob. And all of us get together and basically give a half hour of time to a nonprofit. And so we've worked I've worked with two different people, one who does uh, addiction counseling and another person who is um, basically empowering young girls. And we just give them advice on, you know, how we can help their business grow or maybe something they're missing or something that they don't know. And that's the power of all of this stuff is, you know, getting to know people, getting to know relationships and basically being able to give back to the world. So I'm going to jump back in here because, again, I cannot see the stream. And good content, Brian. Uh, so many options to communicate these days. Yes, Jared, thank you very much. All right. So I'm going to jump back into my screen share. Uh, let's go back to the next thing that I want to show you. So, you know, again, um, let me get a drink here. Guys, I've been talking for 32 minutes. It's amazing. All right. So that's. So that's one thing that I wanted to show you. The other piece of software that goes along with that particular program, so I was talking about Nimble and how I can capture that information, is something called Crystal. So Crystal, what it does, and if Tammy's still here, she can um, let me know how close she thinks this is. Well, what Crystal does is Crystal does an instant personality pro form. And so it, it actually does a instant disk system. So it says Tammy's a moderate ID influencer, often thrives in flexible, fun environments, is quick to explore new ideas and adventures. And then it gives you ideas. So if I'm going to be talking to somebody in lunch club, I can click this button real quick. And so, you know, if I want to make a good impression, if I want to persuade them, schedule a meeting, discuss, pray, you know, gather information, I can get advice. And so it shows me advice. It says learn how or uh, so what. Uh, it's best to learn how um, Tammy's colleagues have done something similar, bring, uh, try to bring the conversation back on track, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, for this kind of person, don't drag the conversation out too long. Um, make information gathering too formal. So ask her nitty gritty questions. Don't do that. Adopt an interrogative approach. So this is telling me advice. If I wanted to, you know, call Tammy or if I wanted to email Tammy, it will give me all this different information. But the thing about that, it does to let me get the crystal here and get to my dashboard. Um, oh, of course, it's going to make me sign in. So I'll go ahead and do that. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. So now I can go to profile, which is my profile. And I can go to, uh, let's see. So let me go back to the profiles that I got. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, bear with me one second. Because they keep changing this thing. So there's team sales, hiring. So there's team, coworkers, playbooks, profile. Uh, so I could search. Well, let me just search Tammy. There she is. Okay. So this gives me just an insane amount of information. So I can get down, you know, I can get how to schedule a meeting, how to call, uh, you know, what, what drives Tammy, what doesn't drive Tammy. And uh, it gives you a lot of great insight into the person and what they know. And then here's some quick tips. It's best to do this. It's not a good idea to do that. And it gives you, you know, how to write an email to that person. It also shows you a personality comparison. We're pretty risk averse or pretty close there. You know, Tammy's a little bit more skeptical than me. I'm a little more optimistic, you know, yada, 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 you know, no matter where it goes. But Tammy seems to be pretty damn middle of the road where I'm all over the place. So good for you, Tammy. You're much more stable than I am. Um, but then you can do all these different things. So you can look at negotiation, closing a deal. You can do a playbook. You can also look at... Um, 
Uh, I can click and look at your LinkedIn profile. I can download it and save it directly into Nimble. So I can save it as a PDF and put it in there. And that way I always have it. And then I can, you know, there's also, um, I could look at the disk profile of you. So I can go here and look at, um, you know, there's your disk and there's your um, uh, basic disk for Tammy. And it shows your disk profile and will also show um, the map. And so you can get a good sense of, you know, where people are at and what's, you know, what's important to them and how to communicate with them. So that's another neat tool that's embedded into. Um, and again, these are paid for tools. So you, you go to brianloves.info and you simply click on Crystal. And I'll have to double check Crystal because it used to be you would get 10 free. Let me get there again here. Sorry, guys. Crystal, there we go. So let's click there. And you could try it for free, and I'm inviting you. And uh, I think you can, from there, um, get a, I think you get 10 free trials of it. So you can do 10 free profiles and test it out and see if it's worth it. Um, I think it's about 39 bucks a month is what I've been paying. I'm not sure if that's the same price that everybody would pay, um, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it is. But it, they keep improving the heck out of this thing. They are definitely invested in it. And I think it, and it's given me some incredible insight on my clients and different things that I can do. So that is Crystal. So those are, and again, going back to the perfect sales strategy, we've covered Nimble and Crystal. I'm probably not going to cover Active Campaign. Um, that's a little bit too deep, but Active Campaign, the reason I like Active Campaign is that it, it does a, a combination of things. I mean, it does a CRM function, but I, I use Nimble. I don't think I need it there. You know, I, I don't like tools that do too much in one place because they usually do, you know, most of them not well. But the one thing that Active Campaign does do is it's email. Um, the ability to set up and send emails from it are amazing. The email drip sequencing. So an example of an email drip, I can give you a quick uh, sample of that. Let me click on active campaign and open that up. I'll open up a new tab. Uh, active campaign. Uh, there we go. Okay, so here we go. So here is mine. And so what an email drip program is, so what, what it does, just so you know, is um, you can do landing pages, by the way. So if I go to site, um, you can create landing pages. So it's kind of like uh, click funnels and those kind of things. It does replace that kind of thing. Um, and I do have one landing page that I've set up, which is join our listener or free LinkedIn worksheet. So if I click on that, um, it, well, it's not going to show it very, very well, but I think I should be able to see it. Here it is. Let me click on that and I'll pull that up. There it is. Okay. So, you know, if somebody wants to download my LinkedIn bundle, this adds them to an email list. And then once they get there, the key thing behind this is um, that uh, there's an email drip sequence that goes along with it. So that is automation. So if I click on, I think this is the automation tab. Uh, without having that open, it's a little hard to see. That's pages again. So bear with me, guys. I apologize. It's a little slow. Okay. So this is, uh, let's see. It should bring these things up, but it's not. But this is regular email. Uh, that's the list. This is reports. This, I think, is automation. Let me click on that and see what happens. Yes. Okay. Here we go. So in other words, I've got a uh, case study that I have on... Um, the LinkedIn Live Bacon and Coffee. So in other words, if you click on um, my case study, which is, uh, if I click here at home, you'll be able to see that. So you can click here for this and download it. And so there's, you know, you want more, you can basically get that case study webinar replays. I'm sorry, I went to the wrong place. But the, the bottom line with this is that what it does, so I can get back to here, is there is a series of email drips, okay? And there's six emails in this. So if I click on this, um, it should open it up. And if it doesn't, you can see there's thanks for downloading the case study, your website, a system of systems analytics. So what I'm doing is if somebody downloads a case study, they're going to get a series of emails that basically re-engage them with the content. And that's one of the reasons that I really like it is the way that it does the email drips and the way that it integrates with everything. So it integrates with WordPress. It integrates with a lot of different tools. 
And I can use that to continue the communications with my clients. And one of the major things I do with that is um, I have a virtual assistant every single week. You guys may be on my list. Um, she goes in and does my Bacon Weekly Digest, which is, um, you know, if I click on this one, I'll do last week's or the week before. Should open up, uh, but it's not. Okay, so let me see if I view report recent options. I can edit. Well, you, bottom line, if you get my weekly digest, you'll be able to see it. And um, it basically all it is is just simply, you know, my blogs and my podcast. It goes out every single week. And um, the open rates on it are just amazing much, much better than anything I've had before. So that's one of the reasons why I really, really like it. So I don't want to dig too, too much deeper in that. And let me go back to here and see if there are any other questions. Um, so Phil says virtual experience platform is cool. Gives vendors a chance to immediate exclusive promotions. Yes, I, I love it. Uh, Jeff says, congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I'm going to be learning more Phil from her. I'm actually have another meeting set up with her. Um, to dig a little deeper into it so I can better understand it. Because I think that, you know, with with the pandemic and, and people being, you know, into Zoom more, I think that that's going to provide a lot of opportunity to do some things that we generally are not going to be able to do. Um, and especially, you know, from a time standpoint, from a travel standpoint, from a cost standpoint, it just makes a lot of sense. Okay, so one last tool that I want to show you guys, and I'll see if you have any more questions or any comments or want to see something specific, please put it in the chat window and I will get to it because we got about uh, 20 minutes here. So another tool that I started using is something called Linktree. And so... Linktree is a tool that is free, by the way. And this one I don't have in the Brian Lovestud.info because I've just started doing it and I don't have a um, an account set up for it the way I would on the other ones that would link you to it. But um, so anyway, so I can log into my Linktree here. And so what it does is it allows you to basically add all of your links in one place. So here you can see I have uh, products I use. So there's Brian Lovestead info. So bottom line, if you go to, um, and I'll show you the actual file itself. So this is what it looks like. So this is linktr.ee forward slash bacon guy. So this will provide you. So if all you remember is the link tree bacon guy, and just remember the dot ee, um, it gives you, there's the Brian Lovestud info. There's the bacon podcast. There's the bacon and coffee LinkedIn lives that I talked about. There's my blogs. There's my LinkedIn training website, which is LI for sales. Um, there's the bacon and toilet paper books, my speaking website, my LinkedIn, my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook, Facebook bacon podcast and YouTube. And that's just some of the links that I have. <laughs> I have 20 websites. Um, I don't have perfect sales strategy on there that I showed you. Uh, I don't have baconcoach.com. I don't have social network consulting. I mean, these in tabs that I have here, I mean, there's my B2B site. There's the bacon. There's my bacon coach site, which uh, I use for all of my coaching. And I save all of my um, recorded training on there. So if I do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session or any kind of coaching, all of that is saved in here. And then people can access it. And it does have a membership component that's wishlist member. Um, here's my book site. And here is the, that will come up in a sec. There's toilet paper math. If I go back to home, these are all my books. Uh, here is my bacon and coffee, the LI for sales and LinkedIn lives. Here's social network consulting. There's my Brian loves that info. I don't have the Brian speaking one. I have a Vimeo account with all of my videos sitting up here. Um, so it just makes it super, super easy to have one location that I can put all these things into. And I'll show you another kind of thing that I did um, is let me do a new mail message. I'm gonna pull this up here. And what I did was simply simplify my um, links on my signature. So what I did is now I have bacon guy and then let's connect. And if somebody clicks that, um, you know, if I open that link here, just open link, you will see they'll automatically pop and open that up. And so now they have access to everything and they can connect with me where they want. So Linktree is free, by the way. So there's no charge for this. And there is a $6 component um, if you decide that you wanna upgrade. 
And if you upgrade, if you go to pro, um, so I've had seven clicks on it already, 21 views. Um, so it even gives you a little bit of analytics as to what people do. And then, so here's a plan for only six bucks a month. It gives you unlimited links, QR code, video links, um, you know, a ton more stuff, email sign up. So um, I may venture into this on a later date, but for the time being, I'm just playing with it to see what it does and how it works. But the free version, I mean, you get all these things. You get the social icons, you get link thumbnails. Um, I haven't played, I honestly have not done much with it at this point. I just learned about it this week and I just plugged it in. But I'm sure I can go back to um, my profile and do a whole bunch with it that I haven't done before. So if I want to, um, so there I can add a link. Um, here it gives you the ability to add images and do a whole bunch of other stuff. And I can actually see there were three clicks on that one, one click on that one, um, one click on my LinkedIn profile. So it, I mean, just the analytics alone make it super cool. So with that being said, I'm going to go back here to StreamYard. Oh, it looks like I didn't even put on my screen, guys. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so let me go back to this again. I'll do Linktree. Sorry about that. I talked about it and you didn't see it. So here is Linktree. Okay, so let me go back to Linktree. Um, I'll go to Linktree start. Okay, so this is it. You get started for free. I apologize about that, guys. And again, I'm running solo today. So what it does is basically it is free. And you can put in your Linktree name. So if I can go to my admin here. Here it is. And so what it does is it allows me to add all of these links. I can rearrange them. So if I wanted to move bacon and coffee up, I can do that. I can move it down. Um, so I can, you know, say I want my LinkedIn to be higher because I'm getting clicks on it. And so that was one of the things that I did see is that, you know, this one got clicked, that one got clicked, this one got clicked. So as I see things are getting clicked, I can move them around and move them up and uh, rearrange them. And then once that's saved, now I can go to here and just click on here. And if I refresh it, it should automatically, there we go. So there you go. So it's Bacon Podcast, LinkedIn, Bacon and Coffee, LinkedIn Lives, you know, all the other stuff that I have. So, and again, what I really like about this, which, you know, I'm sorry I didn't show you the first time, is it shows you the views and the clicks. And with Pro, if you go to Pro, you get a lot more functionality for six bucks a month. It gives you, you know, tons of things that you may not get here. But, um, you know, you can add a whole bunch of things just to the regular version. So um, if I go back... I mean, I can uh, basically click on this and add a thumbnail. So if I want to add a thumbnail to the link, I can easily do that. So let me add uh, products I love. I can go find, upload my own image and just find Brian Loves. Um, I'll just go here and search for a sec and do search Brian Loves. And that logo somewhere. There it is. Nope. Brian loves banner. Uh, and no, it's not finding it. Okay, well, that's okay. You you basically get the point. There's bacon bits. It's it's gonna be in here somewhere. But if I found that graphic, um, let me go to art and see if I can find it real quick here. Do 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 do. There we go. Um B2B. I don't think I have Brian. Well, let me just put my business card in here. I'll do that. How about that? I'll just add that. So um, let me go here and select the file. I'll just drag my business card like that. This is my 2017 business card. So I can do this right here if I want to and save just to give you an example. Okay. And upload. So now that actually has a little logo that I can add. And this is one of the things I'll probably end up doing later today is adding logos to all these things. But there's all my contact information on there too. So when we go look at the live one, uh, if I refresh this, you can see that little logo that's sitting there. So products I use every single day, so on and so forth. So if somebody clicks on that, it immediately takes them to Brian Lovestud.info, the thing that I showed you before. And then they can get to all the different products that I talked about. So again, if you go to Linktree, link or linktr.ee forward slash bacon guy, 
I'll just put that in there. All one word, lowercase, it doesn't matter, bacon guy. There it is. It just brings up all of those links and I can rearrange them. And again, I get analytics on it. And if I do a new email here, I can show you that too. So what I did is I replaced my signature on my email with basically let's connect and here's the link for that. So instead of having all of the different links, which I used to have in there, I used to have my, you know, website, the podcast and, you know, follow me on LinkedIn and all that other stuff. Now I have just this. And so now they can click on that and then they end up back here at, you know, all these links and it is really cool and it is free. Um, so you got nothing to lose to try it out. So with that being said, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to double check um, and see if there is any other information. So you guys have any questions? Um, Phil, I shared my screen, so I think you could see that. Uh, any other questions at this point? Anything else I can help you with? You can go ahead and type that in the chat window. Uh, if not, I'll just do a quickie review and, and kind of talk about some of the things I talked about. So that way, if you haven't seen it and you're just at the end, um, you can go back and take a look. So what I talked about was, is I'll go back to brianloves.info. Let me share my screen again. I'll go back to that because I'm not seeing any questions yet. So I'll share my screen and I'll go to Brian Loves. Okay, so brianloves.info. So all the products that I use, uh, and again, you could find that on Linktree. If you just go to Linktree and click on the first thing here, it's link.tree bacon guy. Um, you can get to all of my things, but then if you click on this, you get to brianloves.info. And this shows you all the different tools I use. I talked about active campaign, which is I use for my email marketing and my drip email campaign. So when somebody signs up, they download something. I have a drip campaign that you know keeps them engaged on it. And the open rate on that has been amazing. Uh, we talked about Blinkist, which is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen because I love me some Blinkist. Uh, what Blinkist does is it allows you to um, get audiobooks in 15 minutes. You can type in any kind of book that you want. Let's look for four hour work week. Four hour work week. And there it is. And Tim Ferriss. And so you can actually listen to the entire audiobook. And it has it right here. It shows you 19 minute read or audio blinks. And I could send it to a Kindle and I can get a synopsis on it. And then when that's done, what it's going to do is when I finish the four hour work week, it's going to auto play another one. So here's one that probably do rich dad, poor dad, clockwork, slight edge. And basically just does, you know, it'll sequence these books automatically for you. And it leads you down rabbit holes that you may not know or understand. Second thing I talked about was Nimble and the fact that Nimble integrates directly into, um, if I click on Nimble here and I type Tammy's name, there she is. So from here, I can actually go to her info and add notes and schedule a meeting, um, add a deal. I can tag her, I can add her or delete her from my importance. And so when I go to Nimble, I can actually go and find all the people I've marked important which I keep in contact with every single month. I send out an email or a direct message to them in Facebook or LinkedIn that says, how are you doing? How can I help? And uh, like Brad is a perfect example, somebody who used to go to church and I haven't talked to him in a while and found out his audio studio is the only recording studio I know in the Western suburbs here, um, that if I ever need a studio, I contacted him and say, hey, how you doing? You know, is your studio still rocking? He said, yes. I said, okay, cool. You know, that way, at least I know that if I have somebody who needs a recording studio to record a book or some radio commercial, I can send them to Brad. You know, and that's that paid forward mentality is if I can send somebody to Brad, you know, he may end up having something for me. You never know. So this way I can keep in contact with all the people that I want to keep in contact with. I can send them messages. And again, um, let me go to Adam here. I'll click on Adam. I can actually see his social interactions, you know, so I can see his social profiles. I could see signals. Um, if I connected with him on Twitter, it would actually pull up all that Twitter info. So this is Adam. Let's see. That's Facebook. Here's Twitter. So I'm pretty sure this is him. So if I check on that, it's going to show me. Uh, yeah, that's definitely him. So it shows me his tweets so I could see signals and this will show me. It'll actually go out and find all of the tweets. Uh, it's not finding any of that. But the other thing I could look at is interactions. And so I could look at messages. 
Um, and uh, it's probably not a good one here. So let's go to data fields, interactions. Let's look at activities, notes. Oh, let me do somebody else so I can kind of show you real quick. Um, let me go find somebody I know I've been communicating with. Uh, so let me do contacts. And Brian G. Johnson. I know we've had, okay, so here we go. So in the last, um, so these are, you know, I sent him an email and these are the emails that he sent me back. So I can actually get every email that I've ever sent him. And it doesn't matter whether it's coming from Gmail, Mac mail, or B2B dash IM. It pulls in all the different emails. And so I can actually keep track of the conversations. I can also look at his activities. I can look at his social. Um, I could see his Twitter, all the Twitter things that he's done, his Facebook stuff, his Instagram, cred, Google Plus, which is long gone. Um, but, you know, this way I can kind of keep track of all of that information, one person in one place, which is really super cool. Then we talked about Crystal, which is another tool on LinkedIn. You know, so that's that's nimble. And then Crystal gives me the ability to view personality. So there's Tammy's personality profile. And I can go here to my crystal. Uh, doo, doo, doo. There it is. And I can see a detailed, basically, disk profile of that person, which really helps when you're meeting somebody for the first time. It gives you at least a little heads up uh, on, on their communication style and how you want to communicate with them. And so that's, um, that's kind of cool. And so, and then I talked about the link tree thing. And that was, um, you know, something that I thought was, you know, pretty cool. So with that being said, if you have any further questions, um, do the amount of stuff you do, the number of people, resources, you know, content create is staggering. Well done, Amigo. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And uh, I didn't even have time to get into some of the other cool things that I use that are on there like Planable. Um, Planable allows me to manage not only my social media, but also a whole bunch of other client social media. So here I can look at, you know, post to, um, this is Google business. So your Google business page, LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn pages. Uh, and it also does Facebook groups, Facebook pages, Instagram and Twitter. So I can basically, if I wanted to, I could post one thing and share it to all of those at the same time. And it tracks it and it keeps a media library of all of the stuff that I've uploaded. So if I want to go back and use it again, I can. So if I scroll way down here, you will see if I want to add a new one, I can easily go here and click on that. And uh, I can compose go to the media library and just click on this one here and it should automatically insert it in. There we go. And boom, and then I simply copy and paste what I want in there. And then I can immediately say, okay, I'm gonna send it to here, 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 and here, yada, 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 and boom, off it runs. So that's the other tool that I use a lot. Um, so that, my friends, you're not gonna see it. I'm sorry, I forgot to share the screen. Of course I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Anyways, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found some useful tools. I will do another one of these sooner or later. I'll jump into Planable, which you could not see, and uh, a few other tools at a later time. Uh, any closing thoughts that you want to put in in the chat, that would be great. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and put on my bacon coffee brand one more time. And of course, drink from my bacon coffee mug, which says Brian Basilico on that side and says bacon podcast right there. And um, those are things that I've created and, and shared. So again, I want to thank you all for coming. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, have you heard really linked? No, I have not heard of really links, but I'm going to check that out when we're done. And if you have a, a link to share with me on that one, uh, go ahead and share that Jared. You can just send me a message in LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. So with that being said, my friends, uh, you know how to find me link tr.ee forward slash bacon guy. You can go check that out, get yourself, um, set up with that. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close this down with the bacon and coffee logo. And uh, we will see you next week with a really, really great guest. And her name is Doreen Petty. We're going to be talking about people and uh, human resources and, and some really deep, cool stuff. So anyways, I hope to see you next week. Here we go. Bacon.